Yes, okay. Super. So today we are going to talk about um, a topic that maybe is not directly related to the quarantine, but still is really important. And these conversations can come up during this time as well. So it is about like child sexua sexuality, its development and approach. Okay. Okay, so although talking with children about bodily changes and sexual matters may feel awkward, providing children with accurate age-appropriate information is one of the most important things parents can do to make sure children grow up safe, healthy, and secure in their bodies. So I know, especially for younger children, parents could be wondering like, hey, how can we talk to our children about these things? But it is very important to start as soon as possible. And of course, it needs to be something that is accurate and age appropriate. For example, there's a lot of parents who give names to specific like little names to uh, private parts. And it's important that children learn the accurate names as, as soon as possible. So how does a sexual development happens in children? And this is also very important because there's a myth that children, uh, children's sexual development does not happen at all and then suddenly in puberty it appears. And it, it is not like this. Um, like all forms of human development, sexual development begins at birth, okay? And at the beginning, and of course it's not with the same information that we have as adults, for, for younger children, it's more, for children, it's more about um, they find like pleasure when some part of, parts of their body are stimulated due to biological reasons. For example, um, children need to be breastfed and they uh, find like a pleasure in breastfeeding and in the, in the movement of suction. So this is one example and this is something that is not related to sexuality as we know it as adults, but it's part of the sexual development in children. It, not, it does not only includes the physical changes that occurs as children grow, but also the sexual knowledge and beliefs they come to learn and the behaviors that they show. Some of these beliefs, for example, might have to do with where does children come from. And of course, we tell stories to our children about um, different, I don't know, uh, La Cigüeña in, in our cultures. Every culture has their, their stories. So we try to create these metaphors to explain children about these uh, theories of, the, of sexuality. Okay, so any given child's sexual knowledge and behavior is strongly influenced by, first of all, the child's age, what the child observes, including sexual behaviors of family and friends, and what the child is taught, including cultural and religious beliefs concerning sexuality and physical boundaries. For example, in some cultures, uh, or not even cultures, in some families, sexuality is something seen as, it has a like very negative uh, point of view. And then we can observe that as um, these children are older, they keep these negative thoughts about sexuality and they have... Um, they struggle to accept uh, some concepts or changes in their body. Um, so it, it's also something that is very relevant. Okay, common behaviors in childhood. So although parents often become concerned when a child shows sexual behaviors, these are not uncommon in developing children. And all this information comes from uh, centers uh, in, the, in the United States that have done many researchers, research about um, this, this topic. So most sexual play is an expression of children's natural curiosity and should not be a cause for concern or alarm. In general, typical childhood sexual play and exploration. So, even though we need to set some limits as adults and teach our children 
explicitly about taking care of their bodies and taking care of their, their private parts, we should not alarm about these behaviors. The normal ones usually occur be between children who play together regularly and know each other well. It can occur between children of the same general age and physical size, is spontaneous and unplanned, and is voluntary. And the most important thing is that it's easily diverted when parents tell children to stop and explain like privacy rules. So we, we keep in mind that this is normal and at the same time we redirect their behavior and let them know that uh, they need to take care of their bodies and respect their privacy and their friends' privacy as well. So for, these are some examples of common sexual behaviors that you can see in children according to their age. So for example, uh, for preschool children, ages less than four years, it could be like exploring or touching private parts, maybe in public or private. Um, it's more like regarding exploration, removing clothes and wanting to be naked. Well, this is pretty common. And of course, we start guiding them and, and letting them know that maybe this is a game for them but again we need to um we need to take care of our bodies and our and every part of our body and mostly our private parts so like start guiding them since very young ages to learn how to um how to do that uh, they can also ask questions about their own and others bodies and bodily functions so I don't know if you remember, but it's pretty common, like asking questions, curiosity about body parts and even, even more when they have uh, siblings. Talking to children their own age about bodily functions such as poop and pee, especially when they are starting to get potty trained. Um, so the next. Okay, young children approximately four to six years. They can purposefully touch their private parts, occasionally in the presence of others. And when we write down uh, masturbation, of course, it's not with the connotation of an adult, but just the act of touching their private parts, attempting to see other people when they're naked or undressing, mimicking dating behavior such as kissing or holding hands, talking about private parts and using naughty words even when they don't understand the meaning, and exploring private parts with children their own, such as playing the doctor, I'll show you mine if you show me yours, etc. When they are older, between 7 and 12 years old, um, they can continue like playing games, but maybe more like my boyfriend or girlfriend attempting to see other people naked or undressing, looking at pictures um, and wanting more privacy, let's say. So it is important, and Ms. Batista is gonna talk to you specifically how to talk to children about this important aspect of their development since they are very young. We can't hear you, Ms. Batista. You need to unmute yourself. Sorry. Okay, are you done with your... Okay, one second. Okay, sorry. Um, Miss Roxana. Can you listen to me? Yes, yes, oh, okay. you're good. So we're here now? 
Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you, sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So, well, as Ms. Roxana been sharing with us, you know, um, sexuality is always present, but usually we start concerning more about this topic when our children are approaching puberty or adolescence, okay? So, um, we want to, uh, to, we're gonna be talking about today what, uh, how to approach this conversation during this particular moment, but as Ms. Roxana shared with us before, this is an ongoing conversation that should start at, you know, the more, the, at an early age. So puberty is a time of rapid and complex changes involving overlapping components, such as hormonal, physical, and cognitive. And when we uh, usually discuss puberty at school, we use this, um, the Tanner stages to help them understand how they go through puberty as a process uh, moving on from different stages that, that uh, might look you know, different for, for boys and for girls, but still have some things in common. So usually we use this infographic that that is here right now we are sharing <coughs> sorry this information uh with fourth grade uh during their unit of inquiry who we are and um we are going through all these stages with with our students so they can be ready to understand what are the expectations that they're going to be facing uh or the changes they're going to be facing uh during their adolescent stage so um, we wanted to uh, name this uh, conversation, you know, as the awkward conversation because um, usually a sexuality education for children and adolescents uh, play a crucial part in their in their sexual and reproductive health and general well-being. And you know, school and family usually share the responsibility for providing uh, sexuality education, but the outcomes are often unsatisfactory for several factors. Um, several studies uh, highlight the importance of communication and show a tendency uh, of children and adolescents wanting to learn from their parents. They want to learn about sexual matters from their parents. Uh, studies on communication of sexual issues emphasize the role of gender, psychological factors, and family dynamics in the effectiveness of sex education. Other studies, studies, sorry, other studies also reveal the evidence regarding the effectiveness of both parent-centered and other factors that characterize families, such as sexual competencies, openness, availability, and effective family communication. Today, we want to share with you some recommendations for approaching this topic with your children in a natural, confident, and appropriate way. But we want to remind you about these important factors, your involvement in, 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 in these conversations with openness and availability. Because you are the, the, the primary sexual educators. So, start talking young will be the first recommendation. It's never too early to start talking about sex or sexuality, just as Ms. Roxana uh, mentioned. Uh, of course, this has to go in, uh, in an age-appropriate way, and you don't have to go into detail, okay? A short, simple answer might be enough, according, of course, to your children's age. If they ask questions such as, where do babies come from? You could answer something like, you know, babies grow in a woman's tummy and when they're ready, they come out into the world. And that might be enough. If not, and your child's next question could be, you know, like, how does baby get there? Then you could answer like, a man puts a seat in there, okay? That's for early ages. Uh, how soon parents start having these conversations will depend on how old and mature their child is. Uh, 
but talking to them while they're still in primary school can help determine their level of understanding and encourage them to ask questions. This is very important because they, regarding this topic, they always want to know more, even though at the beginning they feel embarrassed and they feel, you know, shame of, of talking about this, they want to know more. And as I said before, they want to hear from you. So you have to be ready for when the conversation gets a little bit, you know, um, more detailed. So behind the talk, it's our own um, experience of how we were uh, talked about uh, sexuality, okay? Uh, the awkward conversation with our own parents, right? It, probably if, if we were lucky enough to have that conversation because, um, uh, many parents when we started the unit with a with a survey for parents and, and, and many parents uh, established that they learn about sexuality from from friends uh, in the midst of, of their own relationships and from other sources that were not their own parents right so uh, if we re, re, if we uh, recall from our own childhood or puberty how do we learn about um, sexuality this might be a strong influence in the way uh, we approach these topics with our children so we have to keep that in mind because for many parents talking about sex with their children is embarrassing and awkward but clinical psychologist dr abigail sen says parents just have to put this feeling to one side and as as parents as the grown-ups we just to, to we have to tolerate the awkwardness and we 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 don't have to let this create a stone wall okay so other recommendations are don't talk directly about them of course these conversations are already there the tone is you know embarrassment and uh, um feeling um weird about that so don't talk directly about them you can base the conversation on someone else uh, and this could be a good starting point it's a bit safer to talk about uh when it's in third person when we are talking about someone else uh, and you know sometimes opportunities can rise uh from from a movie from a book you're reading for something uh, you, you're discussing. So those are great opportunities to start talking about these things. Uh, we don't have to wait for that special, you know, perfect moment to sit down and talk to, and start talking about this. Any, any opportunity can be taken as a good, uh, you know, chance to start having this, uh, conversation especially with 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 teenagers or, or children that are about to start uh puberty don't cringe and switch channels if sex comes up in the on the tv children will pick up on your response on your reaction so it's important to be aware of this if we change the channel if we change the subject if we make a joke every time that the the subject of, of sex comes up children will, will be more likely to believe that sex is secretive dangerous embarrassing or something to be ashamed or afraid of afraid of if sex crops up onto the tv or the radio use it as an opportunity to talk those situations uh, could be used as conversation points that can be explored within the family where they feel safe to talk about these issues don't judge, okay? Uh, it's important not to say anything that might close down those channels of conversation now or in the future. Remember that your the approach you show today will be will create the base when when they're older, when they're um, you know teenagers, and they will will have to talk about more complicated stuff. So uh, if they know at, at, at a young age that you are available, that they can, they can trust you, they will come later in life to share anything or any concern with you. We have to make them feel that they can talk to us about anything. As they get older, presumably the conversations will change. And as long as they feel they can come to children, 
they can come as children, they will be safer. It's also really important not to invalidate their feelings and their experiences. Try not to be too pushy with your own perspective or point of view, because that itself can be invalidated, okay? Um, for example, when children come home uh, saying that they like someone at school, um, sometimes, we can push them away by saying oh no you're what's that or you're too young for that okay instead of of responding like that now that we're talking about this and you can prepare yourself to to be you know to be ready for that moment you can you can say something such as um oh well that's interesting uh tell me more about it or or what do you like about this boy or this girl okay so that will create the the setting for them to feel confident to tell you more to talk to share with you uh how are they feeling and i can tell you because you know that sometimes they come to my office around when they are in fourth or fifth grade they start talking more constantly about these things but i've seen also third graders uh coming with these concerns. And my first question after, you know, I listen to them and they they tell me about these things. I ask them, have you told your mom or, or, or your dad? And of course they say, no, no, no. Oh, they're gonna get upset with me. So that's what they have on their mind. But I always encourage them to go home and talk to you and tell you about these things. So please, when your children go home and start sharing this, you know, uh, a, this situations please don't shut out shut down the channels and if you don't know what to say then just uh be an active listener be there for them just listen attentively and uh sometimes it's just that just you know listen is enough okay so uh this is also important we have to teach our children to stand their ground okay a child, a child who is happy to go along with their peers and, and being generally naughty might be less confident about saying no when they when it comes to sexual activity. Remember that what we are trying uh, to do is to educate. And uh, this education uh, ha it has to do with uh, different, you know, sexual sexual uh, issues such as you know uh, the role of gender or psychological factors or the dynamics and relationships and these conversations can also we have to keep in mind that we are also having them not just for educating them but also for for prevention we want to prevent uh, future inappropriate sexual behaviors and the only way to do that is with information uh so parents need to get the message across from an early age that they don't have to do things that they don't want to you know like showing off in front of of the class or being rude to a teacher just because other people are doing that that or because other people are asking them to do that so a uh, these these conversations also create up an opportunity to stand their ground it's just social situations and really showing strong principles about that to stand up to things to hold their own to hold their own confidence about things and not given given to stuff okay uh, of course this this is going to be related to to the, to your values to your family values and it's also um you know, important to 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 bring that up every one once and then you can uh, talk to to your children about your family values uh, because you know they are family values are implicit. We don't we don't uh, are we live through them. We exemplify them uh, for our children, but it's important to talk about them to bring them to consciousness and to say things let's for example you know in this family we value for our family it's important we we feel we we value respect we value honesty okay so uh rather than teaching uh, our girls for example the narrative that if a boy teases you or, or bothers you or hits you it's because he likes you and also 
with the boys, okay? We should be teaching our kids that if they don't like something, they, they have to ask the other person to stop, okay? And if their words are not being listened or noticed, then they have to go and tell an adult they trust. Um, so this is the first uh, approach to, to, to help our children to stand, their, to stand their ground. We have to practice consent by example. Okay, before children even learn to speak, they learn by observing and mimicking the world around them. It's called observational learning. By practicing consent we are with our partners and friends and other children, we can begin to model what consent should look like to those ever watchful eyes, okay? This also extends to how we practice consent in our relationship with the children. By giving children choices and expressing consent in how they would like to be touched, we teach them how to express it when, when we are not around. For example, if, if you want to kiss your child goodnight, you can ask them, okay, may I give you a kiss goodnight? Um, it's very common to tell children like, give a, give a hug or give a kiss to your aunt or to your grandparents or, you know, we, we, should, we should respect them and we should ask them if, to do that if they, if, they're, if they feel that they want to, okay? So to sum up, be available. Openness and frankness from early on is quite important and just an environment where young people feel they can come and say when there's a problem, okay? What more can you do? What more can you do except make sure that they know that you are there for them, okay? Um, another uh, tool we want to share with you, it's, uh, it's this resource that is online. It's called the Sexual Behaviors Traffic Light Tool. Uh, this tool helps children and young people to identify and respond appropriately to sexual behaviors. But uh, for you as parents, it's very useful because you can uh, understand what are the expected sexual behaviors, and you can, um, the, the, and this can be uh, a guide for intervention, like how to respond to to those expected sexual behaviors and also uh, help you with prevention for sexual abuse. Remember that one of the goals of, of um, teaching our children about sexuality is not just about you know teaching them about what are the expected changes they're gonna be dealing with during pu puberty or, or under understanding their body, but also respecting their body and protecting their body, uh, their bodies for if anybody, you know, want to uh, act or ask them to do something inappropriate. Okay, so this sexual behaviors traffic light tool, it's a, it's a very useful resource for you as parents to understand children's sexuality and how to respond to that and how to approach that with your child. Uh, there are some other resources here that you can access if you have, uh, questions we're gonna we're gonna be discussing some questions with you right now in comments but if you want to know more about this these are very helpful resources that you can you can uh, access so Ms. Roxana are we ready for questions and comments yes okay so if you have any questions please write them on the chat from the conversation and we'll be answering them we hope you enjoyed this presentation. And this topic is very interesting. Usually parents have a lot of questions. Let's see, okay, there's one question here. Eh, Podría colocar la lámina anterior donde están las páginas web, okay. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to copy them here on the chat so you can access them directly, and okay? And also, as someone else mentioned, we, we upload this video to the MEDS um, YouTube channel and also share the presentation on the counselor's website. So you will also have the PowerPoint in PDF version. Okay, the question in English was if we could 
uh, put this slide with all the websites that we are recommending as resources. Sorry. Someone, someone before Renata asked if our children can participate or just parents. Well, these webinars are thought only for parents, and you can apply everything to your with your children. But these uh, webinars are thought just for parents. You're welcome. Yeah. Another thing that we want to to mention is that well, we 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 talk about um, about that last week. Uh, online safety was last week, right? Yes. Well, these resources are on our web website. You can uh, take a look to the presentations onto the videos. And uh, but we, Mr. Matt Bright, joined us and he shared with us some resources uh, to you know to accompany children during their exploration of the web because usually children start showing their curiosity and and this is something that i would like to ask you if your child if your children already start displaying some curiosity about their you know their sexuality and uh, you can comment on the chat so um mr mcbride was helping us to 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 have some tools to understand how can we accompany children during that process of exploration exploring the web because they're and and, and taking a look it, to the you know to the history the search history and, and some other places where you can know or notice if your child is already exploring these topics on the web because sometimes they don't dare to go directly to you first and there and there is they start showing their curiosity and the um, through the web through their searches that they do in the on the web so that's a, a great way to have that first conversation if you haven't had it yet so you can um uh, use the you know oh i've noticed without you know remember try not to be judgmental and it's like oh i noticed that you were looking for some some information regarding this and that okay uh, would you like to know more about that you could you know that you always can come to me and ask me if you need to know something because you know the the, the web uh when we put these words on the search you can get through very uh, inappropriate places or share information that our children are not ready to deal with yet. So it's important to be present for them and be aware of what they are doing online. Yes. Um, we have another question here. Is there any sexual education class for kids at the Met? Is that included in their regular program? There is, yeah. maybe, if Batista can explain a little more. Yes, we, we, we start uh, talking about uh, puberty uh, in fourth grade, okay? Uh, right now we are doing that we're with our first fourth graders um, as part of the Who We Are unit and the, learning about the body systems and uh, we uh, approach this topic uh, the puberty changes uh, more related to the physical and hormonal changes they're going to be experiencing through their through their puberty then in sixth grade they go they they uh, go a little bit further with um, learning more about the reproductive system and uh, but we we create the the introduction or uh, in fourth grade uh, we start talking about puberty in, in fourth grade and mm -hmm. we do that with with parents so we we invite parents i don't know if there are any fourth grade parent here i think i think there's a couple of fourth graders uh parents here but um we we start with a survey so we can know more about if the sh if children are already started asking questions if they're already having those conversations with children at home uh about their the the their own way the way they they learn about you know their their own sexuality 
and then we convite and then we do a survey for children to to understand how much they know and to, to learn about their curiosity and then we start having these conversations in a very very natural way uh and we we encourage them to go to parents all the time because you are the primary sex sexual edu educators and and this is a, a joint effort between you know school and home uh-huh so here at the at the um, let me let me share my screen so you can um um let me share the so you can access the other resources we have been talking before in our previous uh webinars I can share, Ms. Batista. Share. Yeah, yeah, thank you because it's not okay. accessing the. Okay. So, uh -huh. can you see? Can you see the the Met Counselor's website? Yeah, no, 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 I cannot see it. No, not yet. Okay. Let me see. We, you uh, can see it. Okay. They, they can see it. Uh, okay, I, so. Here uh -huh. is the Med Counselor's website. We already shared the link with you on this chat. And then if you scroll down, there's this section where it says the, the title of our webinar series, Parenting in Quarantine. And if you access all these links, you can go to the Med YouTube channel and watch the videos, the recordings. And then on the bottom, there's every like uh, PowerPoint on PDF version so that you can have all the information that we have already shared. And we upload it weekly so you can access, and we also have other resources here. Um, let me see. Well, here, if you access to the link below our names, you can um, request a meeting, an online meeting with us. These are the older, the old, um, posts and then on resources we have different articles um, useful for parents to read about so yeah I don't know if somebody else has a question or a comment about you know suggestions you've been Putting there's another there's another question here how mm -hmm. can we manage a situation where kids are watching very inappropriate videos for their recommend age mm -hmm. well um i would recommend to to approach it you know without hesitation go directly and and and, and tell them how you find out uh th that they were trying to to look for this information i i i said i look at the his uh, of the history and i noticed that you were trying to look for this type of information in a very natural way because that creates you know the openness and 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 the effectiveness of, of that communication because we don't want to create a stone wall we want to create you know this confidence setting for they can they can come back in case they want to know more about anything. So try to avoid in 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 the as, as much as you can to not be judgmental. I know that the first reaction sometimes is to be scared or get nervous about oh my child is already you know what watching these things on the on the web and ask them first what they were looking for what was that that they get to see okay what what is that that they access so if they, to see you know if they can let you know about what they notice of course you have an idea because you already look at the search and you look at the history and you look do you can have an idea of what they access but 
it helping them to to share with you and and to in that way you can measure how they they are feeling about it and then my the next question will be how does that make you feel how do you feel about you know all these things you saw probably the response will be uncomfortable or disgusted or embarrassed or ashamed and then and then you can use that as an opportunity to reflect like you see there's a lot of things on the web that, that might be scary and, and inappropriate. So we have to be very careful. And if you want to know more about this, please come to me, come to us, come to your father or to, my, or to your mother, you know, uh, to, act, to ask us because we are the ones that we can, you know, uh, accompany you during this, uh, or if you want to know more about these things. So this, uh, this is a great opportunity to build up that confidence. If you if you use it as a as an opportunity to reprimand or to punish, you know, the now I'm gonna take the iPad away from you or you're not allowed to use it, they will have this sense of that they did something wrong. And and displaying curiosity, it's it's there's nothing wrong about that. The the thing is that they Sometimes they use the web to to look for the information that, and they get to inappropriate places, and that's not their their fault because you know that's the way the web works. So we have to accompany them. We have to be there for them, and to prevent this from happening again, is that conversation you're going to have with them to build up that confidence and 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 to set the tone that is. It's okay to have curiosity, but if you want to know more, please come to me or come to us. And also, and also, Yenisel, because when they start watching this inappropriate content, they have this um, mistaken idea of how relationships between people go and between them and their own bodies. So as you do all this, um, as you do all these recommendations that Ms. Batista just mentioned, also reinforce like love to yourself and respect yourself to yourself as a whole and to your body and also other, spe other people's uh, like bodies and, and as a whole. So, yeah, it's... There's another question. How do you answer the question, what is sex to a seven-year-old? <laughs> He haven't asked me yet, but I'm too scared about it because sometimes in TV they say the word. Okay, so yeah. well, mm -hmm. I would I would ask first. I would ask because we don't want to confuse them and give more information than what they are prepared to understand at certain ages. And remember that seven years old is like something very generic, and each seven year old child can have different interests and you know, maturity level. So you, I would say first, okay, where did you hear that word? And what, what do you think it means according to what you saw? And then build the conversation based on what they already saw. What, what are you wondering? What, do you, what would you like to know? And make sure that you use, um, that you build the conversation based on what they already know and what they wonder about. And to use um, like, not create stories about it, as we said before. For example, if they are asking where children come from, as Ms. Batista mentioned in, in her part of the presentation, well, uh, it, it grow, the baby grows in the mommy's belly and then they, until they're ready to come out to the world. So we try to find ways to explain them that are true and that are also um, age appropriate and that are related to their interests and what they already heard. Uh, so there isn't any one single, uh, you know, answer for that question. Yeah, it's more, uh, I, it's more like listening first to them and what they already know and what they are curious about, and then based on that, um, respond with the more accurate and age-appropriate information that you can. Yeah, and also helping them understand that a word can mean many things. Like sex can be related to, like for example, what's your sex? Like the gender, like female or or male. So what Miss Roxana just shared about exploring what do they know about it or where do they get it? Get it can give you some context or on where you know where where can you go? 
through through exploring that background information that the child it, it's bringing because sometimes we you like you were saying you can get so nervous and it, it, it's care about when my child is going to come with this question but maybe that first question is just related to you know in a very in a, innocent way like well i heard it but like what's your sex and then there's that goes for female that goes for males and you know it, maybe we don't have to go that very further is just a, a very basic information can be enough so it's it's okay to explore first and it's, where and it's the background always, and it's always okay to say well um i don't know exactly yet but let me let me figure out and we can talk about this later like if you're too scared or too nervous to answer something in the moment because yes children can ask you questions sometimes that leave you like uh puzzled you can you can tell them that and then think about it about what answer you would like to give them once you have this conversation like inquire more about okay where did you hear heard that word or what what are you wondering about and then give have that conversation later it doesn't have to be like right in the moment later that day i mean so yes it's always uh tricky with these questions but we are more scared and they are not waiting for you know a complete explanation about the reproductive reproductive system and everything that it involves it's just like um what they wonder about simple things and they need to hear from us something simple as well and reassuring so whatever if you're not feeling comfortable in at that moment you can just say well you know what i um i can i can think about my answer for a for a moment and then we can talk about it later yeah. and that's fine too okay there's another comment here youtube is a source of any strange question in my house <sighs> So yes, they are so exposed to many, and then YouTube. You know the problem with YouTube is that the filters are not. You know, children can get very easily to to some places, and to some YouTubers that are sharing, uh, sometimes inappropriate information or or things that are not quite you know real. So we have to. As we as we were saying last week, this is a this is a, an experience of of providing support and company through the their exploration of these things. Of course, we we cannot be seated with them uh, all the time, but uh, we can ask them like, well, and where did where did you get today on the web? Where did you, or where you were navigating or what do you learn or what do you see? You know, of course they're not gonna share with you uh, if, oh, I, I heard this guy today talking about, you know, sex or something like that. That's not gonna be the natural response, but always going through these parental controls and, and apps that you can uh, put in place so you can be more aware of what your child or children are doing on the web you can reach them and, and reminding them that not everything that we see and we hear on, online, it's true, that we have to be very careful with the information we are getting from the web. So, uh, you know, it's to be open-minded, uh, but if there's anything you don't understand or that sounds um, disturbing or that doesn't make you feel okay or, you know, please always come to us and ask us that's a that's a main you know the like the i will say like uh the parameter for or the guideline for how to approach this keep those channels open like reinforcing them always reminding them come to us and ask us if, if, if any anything you watch or saw or hear, hear makes you feel uncomfortable or you don't understand. Miss mm -hmm. LaCruz says that it depending on the age of your child, it, it is also important that you aren't waiting for them to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, asking them indirectly by saying you heard from another mom that her child was asking about the word sex 
and you're wondering if they know or what do they think. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you have any other questions or comments. Well, if not, then we want to thank you for joining us today. Um, we appreciate your presence and support here. Uh, and well, you know that if you, this is an open conversation, just don't stop here. If you want more advice or you want, uh, if you in the future has to face with, you know, anything that you don't know how to manage, you can always come to a, us through email and ask us like, how can I manage this situation? Can you give me some, you know, support guidelines, recommendations, and we will be more than happy to help you go through these conversations with your children. <laughs> great session. Thanks. I'm more relaxed about it now. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much. Great information and tips. Thank you all for joining us. Also, if there's any topic that you would like us to talk about in following um, webinars, you can also email us with suggestions. We're very open to, the, to them. So, okay. Thank you. So see you next Thursday at 2 p.m. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.